Hey guys, today we're in the book of Joshua chapter 19. So this far, Judah has got their land allotment, Ephraim, the half tribe of Manasseh, and Benjamin. And now chapter 19 fulfills the rest of the nine and the half tribes that are east of the Jordan or west of the Jordan River, right? So uh, we see chapter 19, it's a division up of the tribe of Simeon, of Zebulon, of Iskar, of Asher, of Nephetali, and Dan. And so we have all of these allotments of where um, Israel is to go. Remember, it's up to each tribe to push out uh, the enemy that is left in their land allotment. But what I want to talk about is the last couple verses of this chapter. In true godly fashion, we see in the last couple chap uh, verses... Uh, that Joshua gets his inheritance. Remember, we saw at the beginning of the allotment, Caleb came forward and said, do you remember what God and Moses promised me? Joshua said, yes, absolutely, because he promised the same thing to Joshua because Joshua and Caleb are two spies uh, that were the only ones with faith of the last generation of Israel. And so now, in true fashion, right, leaders go last, uh, in his humility, uh, everybody has their land, and now Joshua will get his his part of the land, his inheritance. And when they had finished distributing the several territories of the land, um, we see here uh, by the command of the Lord, they gave the city the ask. He asked for Timnath, Sarah, uh, the hill country of Ephraim. Joshua is from the tribe of Ephraim, so he chose to be in Ephraim, just in the mountain region, right? In the mountainous region of Ephraim, he rebuilt the city and he settled it there. Uh, and then we see that last verse, that so they finished dividing the land. So all of the land, uh, all of the promised land has now been divided. We have nine and a half tribes in the actual promised land that is west of the Jordan River. And we have two and a half tribes uh, that are east of the Jordan River that are not in the promised land. That makes 12 tribes in total plus the tribe of Levi, 13, who does not get any land because uh, they are to be assigned to Israel to trust God for everything as Levi trusts God for their inheritance. And so we'll talk more about that in the next coming days. And so of all of this that we've read, of all the dividing of the land, I, I know it's a lot of places and a lot of names and borders. And, and I understand you probably are thinking, why did we have to read this? One, it's in God's word. It's important Two, these cities that you read uh, in all of these places are, have been important cities and will be uh, very important as we continue to move forward. As Israel starts to expand its border with David and with Solomon, and when the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom, and the kings of Judah, the southern kingdom, uh, a lot of these will be familiar. So when you read, and they're just names in towns, they're there for a reason, and they ensure Assure us that the Bible is true because I can take you, put you on a plane, fly you 11 hours across the, across the ocean, and I can take you to a lot of these places or to the places that, that these cities were, proving they are real cities with real people, proving that God's word is true. He promised Abraham all the way back in Genesis chapter 12, he was going to give... Uh, he was going to give his descendants a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And today, after chapter 19, that has happened. Slaves have now become landowners and homeowners, and they have a place that they can call home. A part of God's promise has been fulfilled. Hope that makes a little bit more sense, and we will see you tomorrow in chapter 20. God bless.